I am Ramana the Jones, and I'm so excited about what God is doing amongst us. He's doing some awesome things, some wonderful things. Um, this is our golden gospel music medley. So, of course, we're going to be covering songs that are way, way back, all the way up into current. I want to give you all a special invitation. We're here at the Tower of Strength Estates in Baton Rouge. And I am just so excited about just the new things that God is doing, the innovative God, things that God is doing, just the authority and the power. And under his anointing and under even his umbrella that he allows us to walk in here in this earth that he created for us to live blessed, to live in abundance and to live in overflow. And part of that message is finding your place in praise. You know, it's so good to definitely hear other people praise God. But when you're in your home, you need to learn how to lift up your hands as you probably already know how to do. And just give God honor. Give God glory. Give God praise. Give God supplication. Because as long as our mind is focused on the things of this earth, as long as our mind is focused on the people in this earth, we're going to always be looking at what somebody else has or what God has done for someone else. We're going to always be comparing and we're going to always be competing and putting each other down and wanting what somebody has, which is coveting and jealous and envy and backbiting and strife. And then we find ourselves doing the exact opposite to oppose other people's blessings, to oppose other people's breakthrough. So because we think that if they get it, then we can't get it. We think that our God that we serve, that his hands is so short to where if he bless somebody, his same hands that bless them is not able to turn right back around and meet us in the very place that we are to make sure that we receive our blessing, to make sure that we receive our breakthrough. And I'm past the road here today, so I ain't gonna never lower myself to bring myself down to make other people feel good in their mess. I'm not going to ever. I, come, I wish I had a light up close. Let me get this light. I wish I had a light up. I'm not going to ever dim my light down just so that I can lighten up the kingdom of darkness. I'm not going to ever throw away my blessings and throw away my praise and throw away my overflow and show God a spirit of disgratitude to just because you're stuck in a mess of a season of jealousy and envy and backsliding and backbiting and gossiping. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I say this all the time and I know there's another pastor that says it, but she says, tell hell that I ain't going. And I'm here to say today, I'm telling hell that I ain't coming. And so I'm going to keep my eyes lifted on God. And see, that's what today's golden gospel music medley is all about. We have people that it's a golden gospel music medley, but we have people that are meddling in other people's business. We have people that are meddling in other people's breakthrough. And they're meddling so strong to where they think that their blessing is theirs. But I have never seen God deliver mail to the wrong house. I have never seen God deliver a breakthrough and a miracle through the, to the wrong person. I saw that when he healed the lady with the issue of blood, he didn't give her blessing of healing to somebody else. He didn't give her breakthrough through to somebody else. There was another child that he raised up from the dead and it was because that father sought healing for his daughter and God ain't never turn around and heal somebody else's child in the place of that person's breakthrough. So we're here to get a breakthrough in the mind of us all because as long as our mind is focused on somebody else and meddling, 
and other people's business, other people bedrooms, other people living rooms, other people coffee rooms, other people offices, other people associations, other people's identity, other people's property. As long as we're doing that, then we're not cultivating what God is doing for us. We're not giving him praise and glory for how he put food on our table. We're not giving him glory and honor for how he put clothes on our back. He, we're not blessing his name and lifting his name up for how he kept our mind, how he kept us in perfect peace, how we didn't go through things that other people went through, but then we see what they went through, but we still jealous of how they came out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So as long as your mind is focusing on what I have or someone else have, you're not being redirected to get what God has for you. So that means your blessing is on delay. Your mind is not even in the mental capacity or focus state to focus on the business that God has for you. To focus on the marriage and the ministry that God is going to birth out for you. To focus on the house that God has with your name on it. To focus on the children or to focus on the real clothing line or to focus on the music song that he's trying to download in your spirit so you can get to the music studio. As long as your eyes is fixated, obsessed on somebody else, then you're never going to get to where you're going. And I tell you the quickest way to solve this problem, because I ain't going to give up what God has for me. And I'm telling you this today, I wish you would have that attitude. I wish you would say, devil, you have distracted me long enough. Devil, you got me caught up in jealousy and envy long enough. Devil, you have me caught up in perversion that is not benefiting me at all long enough. Devil, you got me envious and, and hurting over what God has done for somebody else to the point to where I can't trust God to do nothing for myself. And so with that being said, you ought to act. God and thank God right now for breaking you out of that mental cycle of going nowhere, of breaking you out of that mental cycle of, of demoniac and breaking you out of that mental cycle of low level thinking and putting you in a realm where you're able to just say, I will bless the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Oh, my soul, Jesus, bless the Lord and all that's within me, bless his holy, holy name. Come on, because what he did for somebody else, he's able to do for us. What he did for Mary in the Bible, what he did for Martha in the Bible, how he healed the lady with the issue of blood, how he allowed even John the Baptist's mother to give birth at an older age, how he blessed Mary, one might say, when she was a virgin even from the onset, how he even healed one of the other ladies that was connected to, to Mary and Martha in the Bible from in, in distant ways. So if God, the same God that split the Red Sea and gave a miracle to the children of Israel, the same God that rained down manna from that rained down manna from heaven to feed the children of Israel, the same Jesus that broke bread in and, and the fish and fed 5,000 is who you need to look to for a blessing. It's who you're going to have to bow your knee to and go for a breakthrough and an identity and, 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 and promises and, and overflow. That's going to man to do what only God can do is because you're not in your place of praise. Because when you get in a posture of praise, me coveting somebody else is too low. Me being jealous is too low. Me obsessing over somebody else is too low. Me focusing on what God has done for them and then I'm not receiving what God has for me or a counterfeit version of that is still too low. But when you get in a place of praise, you're going to elevate above those levels of winds. 
You're going to elevate above false doctrines. You're going to elevate above homosexual teachers. You're going to elevate above demonic impartations. You're going to elevate above envious and covetedness and obsession and obsessive mentalities. You're going to oh, you're going to operate above in a level where you're going to be able to see the vision that God has for you to come to pass. And you're going to be able to write that vision. And you're going to be able to pray and cover that vision. And God is going to give you your own anointing. He's going to give you your own identity. He's going to give you your own promised land. He's going to give you your own houses and prophecy. Because what God does for